Dear students, welcome you all to VTU eShikshana learning program. Today we are starting lectures on uh, engineering chemistry for uh, first and uh, second semester BE students. I am uh, Dr. Prashant G.K., working as a faculty member in the Department of Chemistry, Sarim Vishweshwaraya Institute of Technology, Bangalore. I will be teaching and learning with you the first module of your uh, uh, engineering chemistry syllabus. Before we start uh, learning the first module, we shall see what are all the modules and uh, what are all the modules we have in our syllabus and who are all going to teach these modules. First module is on uh, electrochemistry and uh, energy storage systems. It uh, starts from uh, the definition of EMF, the meaning of EMF of a cell, then uh, the meaning of free energy, the meaning of single electrode potential and uh, derivation of Nernst equation for single electrode potential, numerical uh, problems on uh, Nernst equation, the meaning of reference electrodes, the construction and uh, working principle of uh, calomel electrode, the advantages of calomel electrode, the meaning of ion selective electrode, construction and working principle of uh, glass electrode and the determination of pH using glass electrode. Then uh, we have one more chapter in uh, module 1, it is uh, energy storage systems starting from the definition of batteries, classification of batteries, the different types of batteries with examples, construction and working principle of uh, lithium ion batteries. Advantages of lithium ion battery as an electrochemical energy system for electric vehicles. Then uh, the recycling, how lithium ion batteries are recycled and uh, brief introduction on uh, sodium ion battery. So, I will be teaching uh, this module. Then uh, second module is uh, the continuation of electrochemistry. There are uh, two chapters in second module. First chapter is corrosion and its control. Uh, the electrochemical theory of corrosion, then how metals get corroded, the different factors affecting the rate of corrosion, the different types of corrosion and uh, corrosion control, how corrosion can be controlled, the different techniques of corrosion control and one more chapter we have in uh, module 2, it is uh, metal finishing, the technological importance of metal finishing, electroplating and electroless plating processes. So, Dr. G. M. Krishnaya, Professor and uh, Head of the Department of Saram Vishweshwarya Institute of Technology, Professor and Head uh, Department of Chemistry, Saram Vishweshwarya Institute of Technology will be teaching this module. Then module 3 is uh, engineering materials. There are two chapters in module 3, polymers and uh, nanomaterials, polymers, uh, uh, the what the synthesis and applications of polyurethanes, how polyurethanes are synthesized, then uh, the meaning of polymer composites, then how polymer composites are uh, synthesized, then uh, the synthesis of Kevlar, Kevlar which is used as uh, fiber in uh, polymer composite synthesis, how Kevlar is synthesized, then the properties and applications of Kevlar and uh, the meaning of uh, concept of conducting polymers, what are conducting polymers, then the mechanism of conduction in uh, polyaniline, how polyaniline conducts electricity, then the factors, the different factors affecting uh, the uh, conduction in organic polymers, then the meaning of biodegradable polymers, what are biodegradable polymers, how uh, uh, very important commercial used uh, biodegradable polymer, polylactic acid is synthesized, all this we will be learning in uh, uh, module 3, then one more chapter we have in module 3, nanomaterials, the meaning of nanomaterials, then uh, size dependent properties, how the properties vary with uh, size, surface area, electrical, optical and catalytic properties, synthesis of uh, nanomaterials, there are uh, uh, different methods, uh, these two methods we will be learning, sol gel and precipitation method, then uh, certain very important uh, nanoscale materials such as uh, fullerenes, uh, carbon nano tubes and uh, graphenes. So, their properties and uh, applications uh, we will be learning in module 3. Dr. Viresh Moghlath, uh, Tonta Darya College from Tonta Darya College of Engineering, 
Gadak will be teaching uh, this module. Then uh, module 4 is uh, on green chemistry. There are uh, uh, 3 chapters in module 4, green chemistry, green fuels and uh, solar energy starting from uh, the meaning of uh, green chemistry, then uh, what are the major environmental pollutants, then the basic principles, there are 12 principles, all the principles we will be learning in this chapter, then uh, various uh, green chemical approaches, okay, microwave synthesis, biocatalyzed reaction and uh, solvent free re reactions, their advantages, the advantages of solvent free reactions and uh, conditions uh, we will be learning in this module. Then synthesis of uh, organic compounds, typical organic compounds by conventional and uh, green roots, adipic acid. There are uh, two compounds, adipic acid and uh, paracetamol, adipic acid and paracetamol. They are conventional and uh, green synthetic roots uh, we will be learning. Then industrial, what are the industrial applications of uh, green chemistry? Then uh, the second chapter is uh, on green fuels, uh, hydrogen production, hydrogen production by photo electrocatalytic and uh, photocatalytic water splitting and applications in uh, hydrogen uh, fuel construction, working and applications of methanol oxygen fuel cell. So before that we will be learning the differences between uh, batteries and uh, uh, fuel cells then uh, how this uh, methanol oxygen fuel cell operates with sulfuric acid as electrolyte. Then uh, one more chapter is on solar energy, so introduction to solar energy, construction, working and applications of uh, photovoltaic cells. So all these we will be learning in module uh, 4, Dr. Uh, V.R. Katimani from Bagalkote Engineering College, Bagalkot will be teaching this module 4. Then uh, module 5 is uh, on water chemistry, chemical analysis and instrumental methods of analysis starting from the sources and impurities in water, then the meaning of potable water, then uh, meaning uh, of uh, meaning and specifications of uh, potable water as per uh, WHO standards, then hardness of water, how hardness is caused, what are the different types of hardness, then determination of hardness, determination of hardness using uh, uh, EDTA by complexometric method. Then uh, numerical problems on uh, hardness of water, then definition of uh, BOD and COD, biological oxygen demand and uh, chemical oxygen demand, then determination of COD of wastewater sample, uh, that method uh, we will be understanding, we will be learning and numerical problems on COD, then methods of chemical analysis, okay, volumetric analysis, volumetric methods, introduction, principles of titrimetric analysis, requirement of titrimetric uh, analysis primary and uh, secondary standards, requirement of a primary standard solutions, units of standard solutions, definitions of uh, normality, molarity, molality, mole fraction, PPM, all these we will be learning in uh, second chapter of module 5, methods of chemical analysis. Then instrumental methods of analysis, the differences between uh, the volumetric, the chemical methods of analysis and the instrumental methods of analysis, then uh, the principle of instrumental methods of analysis, instrumentation and applications of uh, um, calorimetry, flame photometry, potentiometry and uh, conductometry we will be learning in module 5. So this module 5 will be taught by Dr. Basuraju BC from uh, BIT Bangalore. So my Topic is uh, module 1, uh, it is on, uh, it is, there are two chapters in module 1, electrochemistry and uh, energy sto storage systems, uh, starting from uh, the definition of EMF of SL, I have already told what is uh, the meaning of uh, EMF of, of SL, then the meaning of free energy, single electrode potential, the meaning of single electrode potential, derivation of Nernst equation for single electrode potential. Then numerical problems on Nernst equation, then the meaning of reference electrodes, what is a reference electrode, what are the different types of reference electrodes, then uh, how a secondary reference electrode, calomel electrode is uh, constructed, how it operates, what is the working principle involved, what are the advantages of uh, calomel electrode, all these uh, we will be discussing. 
then uh, ion selective electrodes what are ion selective electrodes then uh, how an ion selective electrode glass electrode is constructed how it operates then how it is utilized in determining the uh, ph of a solution all this we will be discussing in uh, the first chapter of module 1 then second chapter is on energy storage systems batteries uh, what are batteries then what is a commercial cell then what are the characteristics of batteries then classification of batteries primary secondary and uh, reserve batteries then the construction and uh, working applications of uh, lithium ion battery a secondary battery then the advantages of lithium ion battery as an electrochemical energy system for uh, electric vehicles then how uh, lithium ion batteries are recycled uh, so recycling of lithium ion batteries by direct cycling method then uh, brief introduction of uh, sodium ion battery so this is uh, the course learning objective of module 1 to impart the basic knowledge of chemistry and its uh, principles involved in electrochemistry energy storage devices and its uh, commercial applications and this is the course objective of module 1 to discuss the electrochemical energy systems such as uh, electrodes and uh, batteries. So we shall start uh, the uh, actual syllabus module 1 the first chapter of module 1 electrochemistry. So, electrochemistry is a branch of chemistry which deals with the chemical conversion of uh, which deals with the interconversion I am sorry which deals with the interconversion of chemical energy into electrical energy and uh, electrical energy into chemical energy. So, the postulates that electrical and chemical phenomenon are mutually related were put forward long back only by a chemist called Lemonsov in the middle of 18th century. But uh, this field, uh, this electrochemistry drew its attention when Galvani reported his observations of uh, contractions in the muscles of dissected frogs when they were connected to copper and iron wires. Later Volta designed a cell that was called voltaic pile. Then the scientists showed that the reactions occurring in a voltaic pile were the sources of uh, electrical energy. In 1889 nurse derived a uh, an equation that relates the concentration of a solution to its EMF. So, the essence of electrochemistry was elucidated by Gibbs and Helmholtz. The what uh, the pract the development of theoretical concepts was uh, supported by practical applications. Electrochemistry created a number of applications such as electro plating of metals, electro refining of metals, electro extraction of metals, then electro production of certain compounds. So, um, even this uh, corrosion the module 2 what we are going to study is uh, what uh, the corrosion control is uh, one of the applications of electrochemistry only because most of the corrosion reactions are uh, electrochemical in nature. See the main problem associated with the use of uh, metals and alloys is uh, corrosion, uh, silver tarnishes, copper develops uh, platina and uh, iron rusts. You might have uh, observed the formation of uh, brown or yellow even sometimes black rust on uh, iron articles that is due to corrosion only. So, the, the most familiar and, uh, familiar and uh, outstanding example of corrosion is uh, rusting of iron around 20 percent of the iron produced every year is utilized in replacing the iron objects that have been discarded due to corrosion only. Corrosion in many cases is a slow process, but the losses that occur due to corrosion are of a very high order. If a structure like a building or a bridge collapses, then it, it will, it may involve the loss of human, even human lives. So, we could understand the phenomenon of corrosion, the mechanism of corrosion with the help of electrochemistry only and if we know the mechanism of corrosion then we can think of uh, controlling or uh, preventing it. So, the corrosion uh, control techniques we could uh, so the main there are several techniques such as uh, galvanization, tinning. Okay. So, they are all uh, what uh, the applications of uh, 
electrochemistry only. So, as I said in the beginning, electrochemistry is a branch of chemistry which deals with the interconversion of chemical energy into electrical energy or electrical energy into chemical energy. Therefore, there can be two different types of electrochemical cells. One, the one which converts electrical energy into chemical energy, it is called the electrolytic cell and uh, the second type is which converts chemical energy. So, here electrical energy is utilized to carry out uh, uh, chemical reaction, whereas here certain chemical reactions are carried out and electricity is derived from those chemical reactions. So, the differences, see this uh, table depicts uh, the differences between uh, a galvanic cell and an electrolytic cell. A galvanic cell is the one which converts chemical energy into electrical energy and uh, an electrolytic cell is the one which converts uh, electrical energy into chemical energy. Then uh, the redox reactions occurring uh, in a galvanic cell at the electrodes are spontaneous and uh, these uh, reactions are responsible for the production of electricity, whereas uh, in an electrolytic cell the, re the redox reactions are non-spontaneous and the electrical energy has to be supplied to initiate the reaction. We need to supply the electricity supply electricity in order to carry out the chemical reactions. Then the two half cells are set up in different containers being connected through the salt bridge. A salt bridge is used to connect the two different uh, two half cells whereas here the electrodes are placed in an electrolytic cell, the electrodes are placed in the same container in the solution of the electrolyte. The electrodes in a galvanic cell are of uh, are made of uh, dissimilar metals. Whereas, in an electrolytic cell, the electrolyte used may be dissimilar or of the same metal. Each metal is dipped in its own ions. In a galvanic cell, each metal is dipped in its own ions. Whereas, in uh, an electrolytic cell, only one electrolyte, single electrolyte is used. Then, uh, no, the electrolyte uh, solutions are connected by a salt bridge. Whereas, here, no need of any salt bridge, no salt bridge is required. Then in a galvanic cell, the anode is the negative electrode and the cathode is the positive electrode. The reaction at the anode is oxidation and at the cathode is reduction, whereas in an electrolytic cell, the reaction at the anode is oxidation and uh, that at the cathode is reduction. The examples of galvanic cells are uh, dry cell, okay, Daniel cell, okay, whereas uh, for this, the examples are see very simple electrolysis of sodium chloride, potassium chloride, then Nelson cells, Down cells. So, these are the differences between the galvanic cell and uh, electrolytic cell. So, with uh, this background, we shall understand the meaning of uh, EMF of a cell, what is standard EMF, then uh, what the free energy is. See, free energy, the total energy is the sum of isothermally available energy and isothermally unavailable energy, right. So, free energy is the energy available in a system to carry out, to do useful work. So, this isothermally available energy is the free energy. Then what is EMF of a cell? EMF is the potential difference. So, we shall understand it with uh, uh, Daniel cell with the galvanic cell with the Daniel cell we shall understand the meaning of EMF of a cell. So, it is the potential difference between the two electrodes that causes the flow of electrons from one electrode to the other. Then what is standard EMF E naught cell? This is represented as E cell uh, whereas the standard EMF of a cell is represented as E naught cell. E naught cell is the EMF of a galvanic cell when reactant and product of the reactions are at unit concentration or at unit activity at 298 Kelvin and at a pressure of 1 atmosphere. So, now we shall understand uh, the principle of uh, working of a galvanic cell. See, this is the simple representation of a Daniel cell. There are uh, two containers, see here uh, this container is filled with a solution of uh, zinc sulphate whereas this container is filled with a solution of uh, copper sulphate zinc rod is dipped in the solution of uh, dipped into the solution of zinc sulphate and uh, copper rod is dipped into the solution of copper sulphate 
these two are connected to a voltmeter and uh, see these, these two solutions are connected through a salt bit. We all know how a salt bit is uh, um, what constructed. It is a U tube filled with uh, a saturated solution of uh, KCl, KCl or KNO3 or ammonium nitrate. So, these two, the ends are closed with the porous plex. So, this salt bridge completes the circuit. See the functions of uh, salt bridge are it completes the circuit, it avoids the intermixing of uh, both the solutions and it maintains electrical neutrality. These are the functions of a salt bridge. So, two different metals are dipped in the solutions having uh, their containing their own ions, zinc rod in zinc sulphate and uh, copper rod in uh, copper sulphate solution. So, when these two are connected, see zinc uh, starts to dissolve, zinc uh, starts to dissolve and uh, see these are the products Zn2 plus, zinc uh, undergoes oxidation, this is oxidation, zinc gets oxidized to Zn2 plus with the release of electrons. So, electrons are released into the solution. This uh, solution becomes uh, richer with uh, Zn2 plus ions, the concentration of Zn2 plus increases in this compartment. Whereas, in this compartment, see here, this uh, look at this reaction, Cu2 plus ions of uh, copper sulphate, see the take up electrons, electrons travel from anode to cathode. This electrode is anode and uh, this electrode is uh, cathode. Anode is the negative electrode. I have already told anode is the negative electrode in a galvanic cell and uh, cathode is the positive electrode. So, electrons migrate from anode to cathode and these electrons, see, they combine with the Cu2 plus ions of uh, the copper sulphate solution. Cu2 plus, plus 2 electrons, the product is Cu. So, this is reduction. So, at the anodic site oxidation occurs and at the cathodic site reduction takes place. So, the net reaction is, this is the net reaction, Zn plus Cu2 plus give Zn2 plus plus Cu. So, this redox reaction is responsible for the production of electricity. So, electrons migrate from anode to cathode, electrons move from anode to cathode and current flows in the opposite direction, see like this the current flows and this is how the cell is represented, Zn slash Zn2 plus, Zn slash Zn2 plus, two vertical lines Cu2 plus slash Cu. So, what does this single line denote? There is a phase difference between the metal and its, uh, see, metal atom and its ions, okay. Initially, we will have zinc, uh, it gets oxidized to Zn2 plus. So, Zn is separated by Zn2 plus and uh, see here on the right, uh, so Cu2 plus slash Cu, because Cu2 plus ions will be there in the beginning, they get reduced as copper, copper atoms. So, this single vertical line again there is a phase, this denotes that there is a phase difference between Cu2 plus and uh, Cu and these two vertical lines indicate the salt bridge, okay. Zn slash Zn2 plus, two vertical lines Cu2 plus slash Cu. So, um, here we can, if we want we can show the direction of flow of uh, electrons as well as direction of flow of uh, current, see it is like this. Uh, so, um, electrons migrate from anode to cathode okay, and uh, current flows in the opposite direction, it is understood. So, this is the working principle of galvanic cell and this is the net cell reaction. This redox reaction in fact is responsible for the production of electricity. So, these are the conventions, see the half cell at which uh, the reduction, I have already told the half cell, the electrode at which uh, the reduction occurs is written on the left. See, look at this representation, this is written on the left, zinc is the electrode at which oxidation occurs and copper is the electrode at which reduction takes place. So, one of the conventions is the half cell at which the reduction occurs is 
return on the right and the half cell at which oxidation occurs is written on the left. So, only we have written zinc on the left and uh, copper on the right. Then when a galvanic cell is represented in accordance with the above convention, the cell potential is always positive. If E cell is positive, then the cell reaction is spontaneous. See here, direction of flow of electrons, if from left to right, then the reaction is spontaneous. If the direction of flow of electrons is from right to left, then the nature of the cell reaction is, it will be non-spontaneous. Okay. Then the cell reaction is spontaneous, this we should remember, the cell reaction is spontaneous only when EMF of the cell is positive, it is because delta G is minus NFE. So, E cell should be always positive. Okay. Then in order the reaction to be spontaneous, delta G should be delta G should be negative, this free energy change should be negative. It is possible only when e EMF of the cell is positive as N and F are always positive. These two are always po positive values, N and F are always positive values. So, even EMF of the cell should be positive in order the reaction to be spontaneous. The term electrode potential, whenever we say electrode potential, it always refers to the reduction potential. So, now we shall see, we shall derive Nernst equation for uh, single electrode potential. Okay. In uh, 1889, Nernst derived uh, one equation, he derived an equation that relates the concentration of a solution to its CMF. Okay. So, before we derive the Nernst equation for single electrode potential, we shall understand the meaning of single electrode potential, what a single electrode potential is. See, single electrode potential is the potential difference between a metal and the solution at the interface. So, it is the difference, it is the single electrode potential is the potential difference between the metal electrode and the solution at the interface. Say, we have taken a metal rod M, it is dipped in a solution containing its own ions, Mn plus ions. When a metal comes in contact with a solution having its own ions, it has the tendency of undergoing oxidation and reduction. So, both the reactions occur, okay. oxidation also takes place and even reduction occurs. But uh, in certain cases, the rate of oxidation will be faster compared to reduction. But in few cases, the rate of reduction will be faster compared to, the rate of reduction will be faster compared to oxidation. That depends on the nature of the metal. So, both the reactions, both the oxidation, both the oxidation and the reduction occur. Okay. Say, if oxidation occurs, if the rate of oxidation is faster compared to reduction in the beginning, the metal rod M dipped in a solution having its own M ions Mn plus undergoes oxidation, Mn plus ions are released into the solution. So, we have taken a metal rod, it is dipped in a solution containing uh, having its own ions and uh, that metal is uh, undergoing oxidation that releases, that reaction releases Mn plus ions into the solution, right, Mn plus, plus N electrons. Those electrons, the electrons released by the metal get deposited on the metal surface like this, like this, making it, making the surface of the uh, metal rod negatively charged. And these negative charges attract the positively charged ions present in the solution. See this uh, upon oxidation gains negative charge. Why? Because the electrons that are released into, into the solution get deposited on the metal rod. That makes the, neg the surface negatively charged and these negative charges attract the positively charged ions present in the solution. So, here a double layer is formed. We call it as electrical double layer or Helmholtz double layer. So, this electrical double layer is responsible for the electrode potential. So, only we say it is the potential difference, potential difference between the metal 
and the solution with which it is in contact at the interface. On the other hand, if uh, the metal undergoes reduction, if the reaction of the metal is reduction and if that reduction reaction is faster in the beginning compared to oxidation, see reduction occurs, reduction takes place, the what uh, the Mn plus ions of the solution take up electrons, then uh, they get uh, reduced as uh, the um, what uh, the metal atoms. So, this uh, with the loss of electrons, the metal surface with the loss of electrons gains positive charges. In this case, the metallic surface gains uh, negative charge, it becomes negatively charged. Whereas, here with the loss of electrons, it see positive charges are developed like this positive charges are formed. And these positive charges attract the negatively charged ions that are present in the solution. See again, what is this? Again, it is nothing but electrical double layer only, Helmholtz double layer only. So, whether it is oxidation or reduction, an electrical double layer is formed. So, the development or the formation of electrical double layer is responsible for the electrode potential and that is nothing but the single electrode potential. So, only we say it is the potential difference between the metal electrode and the solution at the interface. So, after a certain point of time, what uh, equilibrium, state of equilibrium is reached. So, we represent it as see, Mn plus plus N electron, they give M. So, this is uh, the um, meaning of electrode, uh, single electrode potential. So, Nernst equation for single electrode potential. Uh, now, we know the meaning of single electrode potential. We shall derive the Nernst equation for uh, single electrode potential. So, so, this relates the concentration, Nernst equation relates the concentration of a solution to its uh, EMF, how the EMF of uh, solution varies with the change in the concentration. So, let us consider uh, the following reversible reaction M n plus plus n electrons give uh, M. So, according to Van't Hoff's equation, Van't Hoff's equation uh, we all know the mathematical expression of Van't Hoff's equation, it is uh, delta G, delta G is the free energy change, delta G is equal to delta G naught plus uh, R T ln K C, delta G is equal to delta G naught plus R T ln K C. According to the according to thermodynamics, the decrease in free energy minus delta G represents the maximum amount of work done. The decrease in free energy represents the maximum amount of work done and it can be mathematically represented as minus delta G is equal to W max. The negative sign indicates that uh, there is a decrease in the free energy and W max is the maximum amount of work that can be drawn from a system minus delta G is equal to W max. W max is equal to number of coulombs multiplied by energy available per coulomb. It is the product of number of coulombs and energy available per coulomb. And we know that number of coulombs is the product of N and F. N and F, F is Faraday's constant and, and N is the number of electrons per mole. And uh, the energy available per coulomb is the electrode potential, it is represented as C. Since we are deriving uh, Nernst equation for single electrode potential, energy available per coulomb is the electrode potential. So, W max is equal to number of coulombs multiplied by energy available per coulomb and we know that number of coulombs is the product of N and F and E is N and F and energy available per coulomb is E. Therefore, this becomes W max is nothing but N into F into E. N is the number of electrons per mole, F is Faraday's constant E and E is the electrode potential. Therefore, substituting this in 
equation 2 minus delta g is equal to n f e or delta g is equal to minus n f e under standard conditions when the concentrations of all the species is unity delta g naught is equal to minus n f e naught e naught is the standard electrode potential and delta g naught is the standard free energy change delta g is the free energy change e is the electrode potential delta g naught is the standard standard free energy change and e naught is the standard electrode potential substituting the, the these two the equations 5 and 6 in uh, this equation in this equation delta g is equal to delta g naught plus rt ln kc it becomes minus nfe is equal to minus nfe naught plus rt ln kc minus nfe delta g naught is equal to minus nfe naught delta g is equal to minus nfe according to van toff's equation delta g is equal to delta g naught plus rt ln kc we are substituting the values of equation 5 and equations 5 and 6 5 and 6 in this equation delta g is equal to delta g naught plus rt ln kc then that equation becomes minus nfe is equal to minus nfe naught plus rt rt ln kc minus nfe is equal to minus nfe naught plus rt ln kc where kc is the ratio of molar concentration of m to mn plus substituting this value in this equation substituting the value of kc it becomes minus nfe is equal to minus nfe naught plus rt ln m minus rt ln mn plus so i substitute the i substituted the value of kc in uh, this equation minus nfe is equal to minus nfe naught then it becomes rt ln m molar concentration of m divided by molar concentration of mn plus then minus nfe is equal to minus nfe naught plus rt ln m minus rt ln mn plus dividing the whole equation this equation by minus nf see before that see dividing by minus nf and uh, and uh, we all know that for pure solids the value of the molar concentration of m is 1 hence this equation becomes e is equal to e naught see substituting the value of uh, m the molar concentration of m as 1 and uh, dividing the whole equation this equation by minus nf it becomes see minus nfe divided by minus nf minus nfe naught divided by minus nf plus rt ln m divided by minus nf minus rt ln mn plus divided by minus nf and uh, since this is 1 it becomes 0 therefore e is equal to e naught plus rt divided by nf rt divided by nf ln mn plus since because this factor is has become 0 e is equal to e naught plus rt divided by nf ln mn plus substituting the values of uh, r f at 298 kelvin 8.3143 we all know the values of r and f okay gas constant 8.3143 joule per kelvin per mole and uh, this uh, faraday's uh, constant 96500 coulomb per mole at 298 kelvin and uh, converting uh, natural logarithm to the base 10 in equation 8 this we have numbered as equation 8 uh, e is equal to e naught plus rt divided by nf ln mn plus substituting the values of r f at 298 kelvin T is 298 and converting natural logarithm to the base 10 in that equation becomes E is equal to E naught plus 0 0.0591 divided by N log M N plus log to the base 10 M N plus E is equal to E naught plus 0 0.0591 divided by N log M N plus. So, this is the Nernst equation for single electrode potential at 298 kelvin. If the temperature is other than 298 Kelvin, then we should uh, consider the equation E is equal to E naught plus 2.303, 2.303 RT divided by NF. So, we have derived, uh, we have come to this uh, equation taking, uh, considering the value of T 
T as 298 Kelvin. If the temperature is other than 298 Kelvin, then E is equal to E naught. It becomes E is equal to E naught plus 2.303 RT divided by NF log MN plus. Next, we shall derive uh, numerical problems on uh, Nernst equation. So, before deriving uh, the numerical problems, we shall see the we shall see what is the uh, expression of uh, Nernst equation for uh, uh, cell potential. Nernst equation for cell potential is see we all know that T cell is equal to E cathode minus E anode, right? E cell is equal to E cathode minus E anode. By applying Nernst equation, E cell is equal to E naught cathode plus 0 0.0591 divided by N log M2 N plus minus E naught anode plus 0 0.0591 divided by N log M1 N plus. See two different electrodes say um, zinc and uh, copper rod, zinc rod dipped in zinc sulphate solution, copper rod dipped in copper sulphate solution. E cell as we all know is E cathode minus E anode. MFFSL is E cathode minus E anode, E right electrode minus E left electrode. So, by applying Nernst equation, E cell is equal to E naught cathode plus 0 0.0591 divided by N log M2 N plus minus E naught anode plus 0 0.0591 divided by N log M1 N plus. Therefore, uh, it is E cell is equal to, E cell becomes E naught cell, E cell is, what is E cell? E cell is E naught cell, standard MFFSL plus 0 0.0591 divided by N log species at cathode divided by species at anode. So, let us consider a reaction, let us consider this reaction A A plus B B give C C plus D D, then the EMF of the cell will be E naught cell minus 2.303 R T divided by N F. E cell is equal to E naught cell minus 2.303 RT divided by NF log CC DD AA BB. Okay. This expression, uh, Nernst equation, this uh, form of Nernst equation for cell potential we need to remember while solving the numerical problems. So, we have understood uh, the meaning of uh, EMF of SL, then uh, standard EMF of SL, then the meaning of free energy, then uh, we have understood the working principle of uh, galvanic cell. Uh, in today's class, uh, we have understood the differences between uh, an electrolytic cell and uh, galvanic cell. Then uh, after that, we have derived Nernst equation for uh, single electrode potential. Uh, next class, we shall solve uh, numerical problems on uh, Nernst equation.